All right, today I wanted to talk to you about these little uh, power supply chips. They're primarily used in the Sony CRT, the Sony Projection, the Sony LCD sets, and they're the MCZ3001D, and then they had the DB, which was the later version. The Sony part number is 6-705-810-01. Over the course of the past six to eight years, I've probably changed two or three hundred of these chips in various sets. When uh, Circuit City was in business, I used to do their warranty work here in the local area and we would change two or three a day, two or three sets of these a day. And the problem lately, I've been having a hard time getting them. Sony uh, was able to, unable to supply these chips and so we've been getting these generic replacements let me show you the difference real quick between a generic and an original chip. The original chip is on the bottom and one dead giveaway is the printing. It, it's a little bit softer lettering. It's not as crisp as the one on the top and it's also not as uh, deeply printed. It it's, um, has less contrast to it. it it's gray instead of white. Uh, every one of these chips that I've ordered that are the top have either the same or very similar date code. They don't start with the letter, they start with a number. Every single one I've ever ordered have had problems. I've ordered them from multiple suppliers and every single one, like I said, uh, has done damage. Even I've uh, damaged uh, some sets uh, by not testing these, so I devised a little uh, tester to determine the good ones from the bad ones. And if you follow my tweets, this was uh, several weeks ago. Uh, here's a set. This is what it actually blew out, was two of the uh, field effect transistors, one fusible resistor and two flame-proof resistors. And the cause was the defective chips there as well. Here is a power supply board out of a Sony projection LCD TV. And it uses the MCZ3001 right here. There are other ones. Some boards use two. Uh, some of the... Uh, Sony CRT sets, the early ones, used three of these sets, two of them on the uh, sweep power supply board and one on the signal board. And those were on double sided boards, so they were a lot funner to remove than the uh, single sided boards are. This one I put a socket into, and this is my test board, and we'll talk about this in just a second here. And one of the things that I've done is I've added uh, a large resistor. It's a 2,250 ohm resistor 10 watt across each of the two main capacitors. They store a lot of energy and I want those to discharge quickly. Uh, there's about 160 volts across each 10 watt resistor. It's actually dissipating about 12 watts total. I'm going over by just a little bit. I only leave this on for a few seconds during testing. One of the other things that I've done here you can see I've added an LED and a couple resistors here as well as I've added an LED over here. If you look at the heat sinks, none of them actually have the transistors on them because I'm not actually going to use this board to create any energy. I just want to use it as a test fixture. And so what I've got in here right now is one of the generic problem chips. Let me zoom in real close here. All right, to do this test correctly, you really need to have a Variac, an AC Variac, so you can control the AC voltage from zero up to full 125 volts. I've got my board plugged into the Variac right now. I'll go ahead and switch it on. It's at zero volts right now, and I'm gonna run up the voltage, and I'm gonna look at this LED right there. That's my input LED. If that lights, then I know there's current being drawn, and that indicates a problem with the chip. And the LED begins to light at less than five volts, and it begins to light very brightly. I'm up to almost 10, I'm up to 10 volts right there and you can see the LED is very bright. I'm gonna shut that off now. And in contrast, I'm not gonna change the Variac. I'm just gonna take the chip and I'm gonna change it over to the one that I know is good. This is a brand new chip I just ordered from another supplier. I'm gonna leave it at 10 volts AC. I'm gonna switch that on and I see nothing yet which is a very good sign. I'm going to run the voltage up very slowly. I'm up to about 20, 30, 
40 volts. I saw a flick on the one LED, which is a good sign. That means the chip's working. It's trying to start. Once I get the voltage up to about 50 volts, I'm just over 50 volts right now. You can see the two LEDs begin to flicker alternately. I can take the voltage up up to full voltage. I flipped the switch off by mistake. I can take it up to full voltage and they still begin to flick. Now this second LED over here, this one is on the gate drive of the high side FET. And what it's trying to do, it's trying to pulse the gate on. It's gonna monitor the current feedback from the uh, main transformer here. Let me try to move it up a little bit. It's going to monitor the current feedback and it's going to control both of the FETs accordingly. It's in the start mode right now. That's the problem these chips normally have. One way to troubleshoot if you have an original MCZ3001 in your set and you want to verify that indeed it is the problem, in probably 80% of the cases, if you heat that chip up to close to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, use a hairdryer use a little heat gun, uh, whatever it takes. Uh, probably, like I said, 75% of the time, the set will work when the chip is heated. And it's the start circuit that primarily has the failure in these sets, not the run. So once it starts, typically the set will continue to run indefinitely until power is removed and then it won't start. So if you want to verify that you've got a bad MCZ3001, just go ahead and heat it up, give it some power, and it should start up. Now keep in mind that if you're working on this set and you don't have your bleeder resistors on it like I do, uh, on this resistor right here to ground there's about 325 volts. That's a voltage doubler circuit so you've really got to be careful. Now this company's not paying me anyway but this is where we got our last order of the good quality MCZ3001 chips, uh, bdent.com. I'm not receiving any compensation, like I said, from them, but I just thought I would go ahead and show that to you, that this is uh, one of the companies that sells the good quality components. Anyhow, hopefully this will help you troubleshoot and repair your set. Uh, looking on Amazon.com, a lot of people have bought these chips. It didn't fix their set, and I can tell you why it didn't fix their set, because it was cheap knockoff Chinese parts, nothing but problems. Uh, like I said, it's blowing up a couple of my sets that I've worked on until I built my test jig and now I can test every single one to verify that it is indeed going to be a good part as I put it into the TV. Uh, hopefully we can get some more videos up online for you guys soon. I uh, Unfortunately, TV repair has been very slow. I only work part-time in the TV shop now. I have another full-time job that occupies my time. I appreciate your views, your comments, and your suggestions as always. Follow me on Twitter, although I don't tweet too terribly much. NorCal715. Everybody, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Have a great day.